Alrighty, next up here, and this is not what we want to hear from Jamar Chase. I don't want I don't want to hear you make any excuses on your poor performance here at the start of training camp and in the preseason games. You are the first wide receiver taken in this year's draft. I mean, that's the weight is on you. The pressure is all on him now to prove that he was worth the first wide receiver selection in this draft. The Bengals had the cream of the crop. You could pick any wide receiver you want. You've got them at this point. They're all lined up. You did your due diligence, you did your homework, hopefully, and you selected Jamar Chase. So we don't want to hear any excuses from Jamar Chase, and this is a bad kind of excuse to use. So Jamar Chase says, lack of concentration led to drops, saying, quote, I know I left a lot of stuff out there. You're going to say a lack of concentration, you're not concentrated? What? What? You're going in to training camp every single day? And you don't have concentration? What the hell are you concentrating on if you're not concentrating on football? What do you got going on in your life? Huh? What do you got going on that's so damn important than not than catching a ball? Huh? Huh? Uh, so, uh, so let's go into this article and see what Jamar Chase is saying out here. And maybe can we buy him at all? I mean, we are truly, truly kind of at, are we at 0% buyability into Jamar Chase? Maybe we'll give him like 10% buyability, but I mean, he's really got to kind of sell us so we can buy some more kind of stock into this man, but we can see what he says here. I don't want to hear this excuse. I mean, you better hope you can explain this excuse because if you're going to say the lack of concentration is why you're not catching the ball, uh, yikes, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear any excuses and this is the wrong excuse to pull if you're going to use an excuse. So let's see what he says out here. The, na the, na the nagging consternation in Cincinnati never dissipated throughout training camp or the preseason as Bengals rookie wide receiver Jamar Chase struggled throughout and never turned the corner, truly never turned the corner. The LSU product drafted number five overall in the 2021 draft began camp with reporters commenting on his lack of separation on routes. We talked about that. It ended with preseason struggles that included a host of drops. So not getting separation and drops. What are the two most important things about being a wide receiver? Getting separation so the quarterback can deliver you a wide open ball. And then you catching that wide open ball delivered to you on a silver platter. So the two things that the wide receiver has to do, this man's not doing them. That's not great. The rookie didn't shy away from the preseason struggles saying, quote, I know I left a lot of stuff out there, but that's all in time for me to get better, of course. I'm not afraid to get better. That's what I'm here for, to work to get better, make the team better, make the organization better. And that one quote right there, I love it. We say it all the time. Yes, we want to see you do good in preseason, but we also do give everybody a free pass. You know, we know preseason isn't the end-all, be-all, or even close to the end-all, be-all, but we're definitely going to praise the players that are getting it done in preseason over the players that are not getting it done in preseason because if there are players that are showing that you can get it done in preseason, it is a possibility for a player to get it done in preseason then we're going to go with those players that are getting it done. Now, if there was a scenario where nobody, like you couldn't get it done in preseason, then yeah, we would still raise up those play, all the players because it, it wasn't possible to get it done in preseason. But we've been seeing people get it done in preseason. Jalen Waddle's been getting it done at the wide receiver position in preseason. Jameis Winston at the quarterback position was getting it done in preseason. Ramondre Stevenson was getting it done in preseason at the running back position. So we're going to be praising those players. I mean, we have been knocking Jamar Chase uh, very heavily here in preseason, but it's warranted because it's what he's been showing in preseason. Now, if he wants to get better in the regular season, yeah, absolutely. And we'll be here to praise you and raise you up when you're getting it done and, you know, getting five yards of separation because it's finally clicking and taking it 80 yards to the house because you just ran over the middle, got wide open, and then used that speed to take the top off the defense, and you're running 90 yards for the touchdown. No problem. We will praise you up then, but we have to see it first. Now, back to this quote here of saying, hey, I'm not afraid to get better, and that's what we love, using this opportunity, using the practices, using kind of the preseason games to make your mistakes so you can get better. We've got no problem with that. So, Jamar Chase, that's saying it perfectly right here. Hey, you know, 
I'm not afraid to get better. That's what I'm here for, to work, to get better. So me making mistakes, I'm getting better while making the mistakes. But, you know, come week one, when everything starts to matter, that's really when we have to see you, you know, practice what you're preaching here. You know, saying, hey, and oh, I know I left stuff out there, which is great. You did. So now don't go leave stuff out there when it comes to the regular season. So, you know, you can talk. We've got no problem with you saying all these things. But at some point, you're going to have to get it done and, you know, practice what you preach come this regular season season so all right Jamar Chase is kind of buying us in a little bit more I'm loving what he's what he's saying here we get a couple more quotes let's keep going here the drops received the most attention Chase caught just one of five targets during preseason action in that one target was a wide receiver screen the all the drops were going over the middle of the field and not even tight coverage so just kind of what our assessment is that he's a little timid going over the middle a year removed from football so you know he doesn't really remember what it's like getting hit over the middle taking that big hit we know you're trying to go for the ball and you know the quarterback throws you into a dangerous spot and you have to sacrifice your body over the middle of the field to make the catch. He's a year removed from that. So maybe a little timid, a little bit, you know, extra time to get back into, you know, his prime LSU day. Um, so here we go. Chase caught just one of five targets during preseason action. Joe Burrow's only preseason pass slid right through the rookie's hands on a simple wide receiver screen. Said quote here by Jamar Chase. If you look back at it, I jumped in the air when the ball got to me. That means my eyes weren't concentrated on the ball. I didn't keep still. So that makes my eye adjustment for the ball move around. So, hey, he's breaking down why he didn't catch that ball. Fantastic. Knows how to fix it. Uh, knows what went wrong and knows what the true technique should have been. And is going to hopefully correct that in the regular season. So, hey, he understands what he's doing wrong. Isn't afraid to make mistakes. Okay, he's kind of buying us more. All righty. All right, we get uh, two more quotes, so let's keep going here. After a marvelous 2019 season at LSU, when Chase dropped just 4.8% of his targets, which, according to ESPN stats and information, was just under the average of Power 5 wide receivers, Chase opted out of the 2020 season. While some rookies who opted out haven't shown any signs of rust, Chase seems to have been hurt the most by the year away, like we just said. So let's see what he has to say about this quote. I don't want to blame it on me sitting on my butt the whole year, but it probably has something to do with that of course so hey he's even saying hey you know I was a year removed I was one year removed I didn't play football for an entire year and we know the work in the blood the sweat the tears the sacrifices that go in just to play one snap one snap in this uh, NFL in and in a game you know let alone the entire game and let alone 16 games and let alone 17 games now and let alone you know if you make the playoffs so you know we're talking about a potential three more playoff games and let alone the Super Bowl we know the work that has to go into it he was a year removed from that work so use this kind of opportunity in the preseason this was kind of you know a a really, really fast-forwarded entire year. Hopefully, he was able to kind of cram that entire 2020 season into the training camp period, in the practices, in the uh, preseason games. So, you know, come this regular season, he's right where everybody is. Everybody's on kind of the same footing. Everybody's at the same start point. So, hopefully, he's, you know, getting it done. He's kind of hammering out the finer details here in the last couple of days, in the last couple of practices before week one where he is going to be out there. Like this article said, he only had five targets. That's not going to be what he's going to be doing. I mean, Joe Burrow should be going to him at least double five times a game. I mean, I'm, I want to see 10 targets to Jamar Chase every single game. So his level of production is going to, I mean, just truly expedite immensely out here so you know going oh you know hey he went one of five that's not bad well that's still bad but you know if you want to kind of you know you know look for you know a silver line well you know hey it was only five passes well now he's going to get those targets ramped up heavily here come week one so hopefully he's doing everything to get to that point where he needs to be productive all right one last quote here 
Despite the struggles, the Bengals staff has consistently backed Chase, which they have. We've talked about that as well. Suggesting they still expect the rookie to play a significant role in a wide receiver core that includes Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins. Yeah, you don't take a wide receiver, what was it, fourth, fifth overall, I think fifth overall, and not expect to use him heavily in the wide receiver rotation. You use a top five pick on this man. You will use this man. It's easier to believe that Chase is going through rookie struggles after a year off that, than that he somehow just forgot how to catch the ball. Last quote here by Jamar Chase, quote, everyone wants to see this and that, but I'm excited, excited to show literally me, myself. I'm excited to do what I came here to do, so... Yeah, I mean, you you he you can't just kind of brush over. Hey, you know, there's big expectations on him. You know, Jamar Chase can't say, hey, you know, I know everyone wants to see this and this, but you know, hey, no, you were the number five pick overall, the first wide receiver drafted in this year's draft. Of course, there's huge expectations on you, on you here. You can't just you know gloss over and be like, you know, hey, there's no expectations on me. No, there are. You have to live into that. You really have to kind of play into that uh, because of where you were selected in this draft. You can't kind of, you know, go with this chip on your shoulder that all these other wide receivers have. You know, oh, you know, we hear it all the time. You know, players like, oh, you know, I keep a list on every team that passed up on me. I keep a list of all the wide receivers that I, that were ahead of me and use that as fuel as mo and as motivation. Jamar Chase can't do that because there was like four teams that passed on him and they all went with quarterbacks. It's not like they were going with other wide receivers and you were the first wide receiver. So you can't use any of those excuses, those classic kind of narratives that a lot of pl people, players say. You can't use that as motivation because it's not true. So... Jamar Chase is going to have to figure out his own form of motivation here, and it seems like it's going to be, hey, I know there's a lot of expectations on me, and I'm not here to live up to that for y'all. So that seems to be the kind of motivation factor that he's going to be using throughout his entire career, and we'll see if it pays off because we have to see something good out of this man kind of quickly because, I mean, the media is never really forgiving. They've got stuff to talk about, and they're on, you know, ESPN, that's all they do. They've got an entire channel dedicated to sports, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They have to have things to talk about. And if Jamar Chase looks bad week one, drops all of his passes, if he even drops one pass, I mean, the, the media will run with that, folks. So, Jamar Chase, you better hope you get it done quickly rather than later because... The, the, the media will have a field day if you're not getting it done week one. Maybe even us. We don't want to, but if you're not getting it done week one, I mean, and we see Jalen Waddle receive for 100 yards and Devontae Smith uh, receive for 200 yards and a touchdown. I mean, once again, you're going to be compared to everybody that you've been drafted with. If they're getting it done week one and you're not, we're going to be lifting up those players and questioning why you aren't at their level yet while they are even rookies as well. I mean, we're going to have to make that comparison. So we'll see what Jamar Chase can do. He kind of bought us in a little bit more here. I think maybe if we were starting at 10%, I think I'd go as high as 25%. Love hearing what he's saying. This is exactly what you have to say. This is exactly kind of what I want to hear. So we'll see how he's doing.